Today is Thursday. Yep. It's all right. Let's remind ourselves that X is the same as input, which is the same as domain. tends to work better if I don't have my binder. I don't know why, but it just does. <clears throat> and then Y is the output which is our range. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a couple different um, scenarios and some, some graphs and tables and relations of ordered pairs and we're going to identify our domain and range. It's going to be great. Then you're going to do another quick little Ed puzzle about identifying domain and range. Um, I did get to the bottom of some of the issues when it's not submitting. Either you're really not finishing the video and like waiting until it prompts you to rewatch or replay, or you're not in Google Chrome. If, if you're doing both of those things and it's still not working, that's a problem. But my earlier classes, I had them make sure they did those things because we tried another one today and it worked. So we're going to just do this short one as kind of like a Hey, easy couple points. Also, I need to make sure it's working. Okay, so first we're going to look at a relation of ordered pairs. So we have negative one, four, two, three, and five, six. be my three domain values? Avery? Negative one, two, and four. Great. And what would be my three range values? Addie? Four, three, and six. Yep. In the video today, they're going to talk about a specific way to order these um, from least to greatest, but for the sake of just what we're doing right now, of course, and I would never count you wrong if you don't put them in order from least to greatest, but that's what they're going to talk about in the video you're going to watch today. Okay, our second example requires a graph. So everybody grab a graph and glue it onto your paper like so. They're all the same.
once you have it glued in, go ahead and plot these points. You can use whatever color you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be a colored pencil. I just think it shows up a little bit better than pencil on some of these graphs. All those points, yep. And so then the best way to deter to find the domain and range, at least I think, because I like organization, is to list all of the ordered pairs. And then go through and identify the X's and the Y's. Okay, and then probably people are thinking, well, What's an organized way to list all the ordered pairs? Well, I would just go from left to right. Go across the graph from left to right and list the ordered pairs. So my first one's going to be negative 5, 1. Then I would have negative 3, negative 1. Negative 2, 4. 0, 0. 2, 2, 2, negative 5, and 5, 1. So my domain would be negative 5, negative 3, negative 2, 0. I only have to put 2 once because it duplicates itself. And then 5. My range would be one, negative one, four, zero, two, negative five, and one. Did I do something wrong? Well, I yes. Um, so how come for the domain you didn't put two twice, but for the range you put two once? What did I have to do? Hmm. Yeah, we don't need to do that. Good question. Yeah, you don't have to duplicate them. Now, 
honestly, if you did duplicate them, I'm not going to count you wrong on a quiz. But mathematically, and especially in the video, they're going to say, don't duplicate like it's a big deal. I genuinely don't care either way. But I don't want you guys confused when you're watching the video. And like higher grades, would you get like points off? Depends on the teacher, honestly. It's like teacher discretion. Mathematically, it's still accurate. But if a teacher says, you better not duplicate, then just play their rule. Just like my decimals. However, I think everybody's rule should be no decimals ever in life. So you're just going to say boo? Huh? I won't even say boo for that. No. That's not boo worthy. Huh? I think you did in the last one. And I, I don't even know if I did it or not. I might have. Okay. How are we feeling about... Identifying domain and range so far. Okay, that's when it gets hard. Let's go on to the next page. Negative five. Because we didn't have to duplicate the ones. Okay. This is when it gets a little abstract. Go ahead and glue in a graph. On the top of the next page, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so everyone can see where that is. And then I'll zoom back in when you need to put something on there. Um, some of you, I notice, are like using half a glue stick for each time we glue. Let me show you all you really need to do because I, th I think it's interesting that people have different strategies for gluing. So I just do a border on the outside and then an X across the middle. That's so really all you need. You don't need, you know, we're not trying to uh, cement something down. Yep. Just a little border around the outside and then an X across the middle. That's, that's plenty. Okay, I'll put those points on there. Can you guys see them? Okay, do you need it zoomed in? There's those two points. And then, you guys are going to be the first group to use my new ruler. Okay, wait. Just take a second to talk about ruler etiquette. I'm guessing that means people have probably broken the ruler etiquette in the past. Maybe. I know, it's your high name. What could you possibly have to talk to me about using a ruler? Don't be surprised. Yep. Yep. We don't use them as drumsticks. We don't try to present them. If I catch you using a ruler inappropriately, you lose ruler privileges. No, they are not swords. They are not back scratchers. The dress. You're gonna have to take the wrappers off because they are brand new. Can we keep the wrappers? Did you say what? Why did you 
See if I can adjust this so that you guys can see it better. Is that better? So our domain and range are going to be different because it's not just x's and y's. It's like it's, this is where our inequalities are going to come into play. Because now we're talking about all of the x's that could be on that and all of the y's that could be on it. Yeah? Okay. So we're going to write underneath here domain and range. Now you need two colors. I'm going to be using orange and blue. You can use whatever colors you want as long as you coordinate. So I just use my pencil for this. But whatever you, yeah, just don't use the same color you used if you use something else. I'm going to use orange and blue. Okay. Okay, so this is when you guys need to look, listen, learn, because every year I have students that can, they just 100% weren't paying attention in those like two minutes I was explaining, and then they just never get it, and I don't want that to happen to you. Okay, so remember, domain is the x values, right? This is the x-axis, okay? So my domain is going to be between, nope, don't pick up your pencils. Pencils down, you're just look, listening, and learning. I'll give you plenty of time to write this. Yes, sir? I was going to say what the main one Nope. So I'm going to draw my horizontal line. This is all of the x values that this encompasses, right? So it goes from negative 3 over to 5, correct? So my domain is going to be all of the values between negative 3 and 5. So I'm going to color code that so everybody can remember that these were my x boundaries, negative 3 and 5, less than or equal to. It's an inequality. Yep. So go ahead and fill in your domain values. It's both of them are less than or equal to. So my domain is this window here. All of my horizontal values. I would draw it just so you can see it as a reminder. Is it on five, negative four? I just drew from here to here to show my horizontal domain values. So is it always going to be the number is less than or equal to x? Right. And then is less than or equal to well, depends on the graph. For this graph, yes. So we're going to do, that's why you guys have all these graphs here. We're going to use them. Okay, so then my range, do you have a question? Yeah, for the graph, will there ever be an open circle? 
like a line because I'm There could be. Soft. In which case, then, what would your value be? Um, just no line under it. Correct. Just less than. Yep. Okay, so my range is all of my y values on my y axis, the vertical axis. So that's going to be from this point up to this point. So this is going to be my range. So my range values are going to be from negative 4 less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 1 because this is my range values here. Yeah? So the x's are my x boundaries. The range of the y values are my y boundaries. So how wide is it? That's my domain. How high is it? That's my range. When you're done, glue in the next graph. Mm -hmm. If we don't use them today, we will finish up tomorrow. Jackson, do you have a question? Saying hi to someone? Oh, okay. So we've got the beginning of a parabola here, which we'll get to towards second semester. A parabola. Parabola. Is your if it's not perfectly accurate? I mean, mine is not perfect either. So, yep, just do the best you can, as long as it looks somewhat similar. And you have your arrows at either end, and you have a point on the x-axis, we're good. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. What does the domain represent? X values. Okay, so we're talking about the width, right? All of the space from left to right. If these keep going forever and ever, what are all of my possible X values? All of them, right? So domain is X is all real values. Or do you want me to put that? Just, I, I know it seems weird, but write all real okay. values. Yeah. You have to write real? Yes. <laughs> all real values. So everything forever and ever and ever and ever from the left to the right, okay, is going to be my domain. Because of these arrows, that tells me 
that x can be anything left to right. But y is a little bit different. PK? You're so close, kind of. But we, we say it a different way. Why did you say all positives? Because it's only going up. From where? From two. From where? Number two. Think about the verticals. Where is it going up from? Zero. It's from zero, right? Y is greater than or equal to zero. Because it's going to be everything going up is what you said, which is everything is greater than zero. So this two doesn't matter when, it, when we're talking about the range. The zero of the y-axis, how it's on zero, that's what matters. Logan. Can we just put like, that dot anywhere else in the x-axis? Yep. The exact same thing. Yep. Because x can be what, Logan? All real values. Ta-da! Okay. Put your graphs in a special pocket so you can use them again tomorrow. We'll stop right here. Um, no. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, so Vince just asked, do we really still need that matching thing? Um, you can keep it if you want for, like, fond memories. Oh, these? Yes. I did give you guys all credit for doing it on Power School. I don't know if you saw that, but I gave you an, an assignment grade for completing it. Because I'm going to believe that you all completed it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You do you. Okay, now...